brothers and sisters, I am just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And we know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the one that is and was and is to come. King of kings, Lord of lords, and there is no other master of the universe. And so today's message is a love story. And so if you brought your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. And we're going to start reading in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known in God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So brothers and sisters, anybody that doesn't believe in God Almighty, master of the universe, after seeing the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, our human bodies, the plants, the animals, they have to know that God is there. And if they don't believe, they have no excuse. Amen? Amen. So the second passage we'll read is found in Romans chapter 12. We'll start reading at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God. Because of the love of Jesus and God Almighty, Jesus came and died, was buried in a rose for all those who accept him. Follow Jesus by repenting of their sinful ways and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And the Word of God says it's our reasonable service. Amen? Amen. He did that for you and me. Without that, nobody is saved. Nobody goes to heaven instead of hell. Amen? Amen. And so we must love him as he loves us first, and did that amazing, incredible, merciful thing for dying on the cross for you and me. Amen, brothers and sisters? Amen. In Matthew 26, 28, when talking about communion, he says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many for the remission of sins. It doesn't say for everyone, brothers and sisters. It says for many. The ones who accept him and choose to give up their lives for Jesus, follow Jesus. And to follow Jesus is to follow him in obedience. Amen? Amen. Too many people out there believe that they went to harvest and they went down on the yard and they said a prayer and they're going to heaven no matter what they do. But brothers and sisters, it doesn't work that way. Faith in baptism is your first step to salvation. When that happens, you are a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit. And as Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You must repent, turn from your sinful ways. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we read that we are to renew our minds so that you can prove what is the good and acceptable will of God. And his will is that we do not continue to sin. That doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes. But God doesn't want you to backslide. And backsliding is going back the way you sinned before you were saved. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are all work in progress. Striving for sanctification all the days of our life. Bettering ourselves in the grace of God. Paul was wretched, and when he found himself repenting, would seek God more. David felt bad when he sinned, and God loved David's heart. If you don't feel bad when you sin, you will never better yourself. And we must continue to better ourselves until he takes us home. Amen? Amen. So keep pressing forward. Paul kept pressing forward until he reached his plateau when he was ready to go to heaven. And that is why when the Holy Ghost was telling everyone around him, including him, that if he went to Jerusalem, he would be captured and ultimately put to death. But he made the decision to go to Jerusalem. He knew it was the end of the road for him, and he was ready to go and be with the Lord. Amen? 
Amen. It is a love story. You must love the Lord to follow him. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. You must love the Lord to do what he says. In John 21, 15, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me three times? And Peter was grieved because he asked him three times. He asked him three times, brothers and sisters, because there's three kinds of love. There's family love, there's brotherly love, and there's agape love. And agape love is the true love of God. And brothers and sisters, if you're saved today and you have the Holy Spirit in you, you believe Jesus came incarnated from heaven, died, was buried and arose for your sins and mine, and you have repented of your sinful ways, brothers and sisters, you have that kind of love. Jesus is love inside of you, and you love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, in Acts 17.30, it reads, In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. And the New King James reads, Overlooked. He overlooked it. But he's not overlooking things now, brothers and sisters, and he commands commands everyone to repent. That's turn from your sinful ways. And that is how we receive the Holy Spirit and sealed for the day of redemption and washed with the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So get excited about that. But brothers and sisters, if you're not saved today, because the way you know if you have the Holy Spirit, you will have the love of Jesus inside of you. And if you don't have the love of Jesus inside of you, and the Holy Ghost is tugging on your heart to be saved today, I invite you to humble yourself, bow your heads, and say a prayer of repentance with me. And if you have backslid and went back to sinning the way you did before you were saved, and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please bow your heads down with me and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son to die on a cross for my sins. Please, Father, forgive me for all the sins that I've ever done. And even sins I did that I did not know were sins, Lord. And help me, Lord, to renew my mind. Take this cardinal mind away from me, Lord. Renew this stony heart into a pure, loving heart, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Your will always be done, Father, not mine. We pray this in the loving, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. If you're new to being a Christian, you need to get a Bible. If you don't have one, get one. If you're not reading the Word, the body will take over. We must get better to get close to God. And the only way we're going to get better is to read the truth. Jesus shows us how to live and how to please God. And so work on pleasing God every day. And ask to be filled up with the Holy Spirit every morning. Because brothers and sisters, you can lose it. The Word of God tells us if the salt loses its flavor, it is good for nothing. The flavor is the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God tells us that our outward body is perishing, but our inward is being renewed day by day. So every day, ask to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. And if you're filled up, ask to be filled up with double the Holy Spirit. The apostles had double the Holy Spirit, and that's how they could overcome what they had to go through. Amen? Amen. And join a Christian church. Fellowship with Christians. Get rid of any evil company. They will cause you to sin. So stay in the Word every day. You need that spiritual food more than the regular food you eat. It will keep you alive eternally. And pray every day. Every morning when you get up, ask to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Thank Him for keeping evil from you throughout the night. And ask them to keep evil from you throughout the day. That covers everything. Attacks, diseases, accidents. Ask them to lead you out of temptation. 
And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and the devil tempts you, you just simply rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he will flee. He hates to hear and can't stand the name Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so when you're striving for sanctification and you're striving to receive the Holy Spirit, you need to put up a barrier when the devil tempts you. By reading the Bible or praying or singing Jesus songs, the devil cannot stand it and he will flee. Amen? Amen. And so may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, what is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.